X wing, which is X ray. Dr. Campier, 5219. John, I'm not real happy where his pro time is. Why don't you give his doctor a call and change that coming in order, okay? Okay, I'll do that. All right, I gotta go down and see Mr. Wild. Oh, okay. Hi, how are you? Dr. Garrahy, OR staff. Dr. Garrahy, OR staff. Code red, 843. Code red, 843. Code red. 843. We have a code red on center eight. Center eight. Don't worry, you'll be fine. But I can't. I can't walk. What, what's, the, what's the smoke? I'm what's... happy. You don't need to be concerned. Don't worry, Helene. You're going to be okay. Code red, center eight. Don't worry, Renee. I'm taking you to an area of safety. We're going to get you out. Sandy, let me help you out. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, Trent and I are going to pull you out of the room. We'll bring you down to a safe spot. You'll be okay. Don't worry, Craig. I'll have you out of this smoke in a minute. Everything. Don't worry, Mr. Wilder. It's going to be okay. Everything will be okay. Just, Just hang, hang in there. Out of the way. The fire department's on the way. All right, security, what type of alarm do we have? A pull station on Center 8 with a phone call of an active fire. Pull station on Center 8, phone call, active fire. It's okay, Mr. Sullivan, we're going to get you out of here. The fire department's on its way. Major fires in healthcare facilities are rare, but when they occur, they may have greater potential for loss of life than fires in other types of facilities. Ma'am, I'm going to have you take your patient down to the Bryant unit. The reasons for this are clear. Most patients simply can't evacuate on their own because of their medical condition or age. Others may be confused by the alarm sound or frightened by the smell of smoke, or they may not know the best way out. Being in a hospital, it's extremely important that all members of the staff are very, very comfortable with the evacuation policy of the hospital, but also the floor as well. We are here to protect and save people's lives. If we don't practice good fire safety habits, we can risk putting our patients into danger. To protect patients, staff members need to understand fire response procedures, including how to sound the alarm and get help, how to prevent fire and smoke from spreading, and how to conduct an evacuation. Evacuation plans are critical. All staff members need to know the evacuation plans and need to know what to do and how to perform during an emergency. And this helps them provide maximum patient safety. Healthcare facilities have written fire procedures describing what needs to be done by the staff in every part of the facility. Understanding the plan for your facility and practicing evacuation procedures are essential steps to preventing loss of life during a fire. But conditions can change. Staff members still must use their own best judgment, always remembering that the number one priority is patient safety. The first thing is to make sure the patient's okay, that their oxygen supply is okay, that their drips are running okay, because you really want to be sure that you're not abandoning the patient and you want to be sure that help is identified and is coming as rapidly as possible. It's very important that staff knows what to do. They don't have to run to a manual. They know right off the bat this is what they can do and they can act quickly. Remember, it's your responsibility. No matter what your job is, you are responsible for knowing and carrying out your part of the plan. What's the matter? Take your time. Is there a fire? Well, you know what? We're not sure yet. Nurses, Doctors, orderlies, maintenance staff, kitchen workers, volunteers. Everyone needs to know how the plan works and what their role is. And I want the rehearsal to begin now. Code red. For people to act effectively under the stress of a fire emergency, response procedures need to be practiced regularly. Only through regular drills can each staff member learn what his or her role is and how to perform it. Drills are very important. We try to make them as close as possible to the real, real fire situation. It helps the staff to know what to expect. Drills 
tell you what the problem is, what you're supposed to do about it, where you're supposed to go, and when you're supposed to go. It's just very important to practice, practice, practice. The end result of all the training and procedures is that um, there's a benefit to everybody who's in the hospital that in the case of emergency, we will get staff, families, visitors, everybody in the hospital out in a very quick and very safe way. If a fire breaks out in a patient care area, there are specific steps to take. Code red, 843, code red, 843. Call out the facility's code word to alert other staff members. Activate the fire alarm. Evacuate anyone in immediate danger. Attempt to control or extinguish the fire if it can be done safely. Close doors to contain the smoke and fire. Once a fire has been contained to the room of origin behind a closed door, never reopen the door or attempt to re-enter the room to extinguish the fire. Then, evacuate the smoke compartment as directed by the person in charge. Healthcare facilities are divided into smoke compartments. Between the compartments are smoke barrier doors. When the doors are closed, they prevent smoke from moving into another compartment. If all doors are closed, the fire will be confined to a limited area and patients will be safe in adjoining smoke compartments. Smoke barriers are crucial because smoke is so dangerous. Most people think the danger in a fire comes from flames, but it's the smoke, which can travel quickly to areas far from the fire, that kills most people. With the fire comes toxic gas and smoke. Smoke is the, probably the most dangerous part of a fire. It acts quickly, it will deprive you of oxygen, and it can kill you within minutes. That's why response plans emphasize moving people out of smoky areas and preventing smoke from spreading. We close doors during emergency procedures because we need to make sure that the fire and smoke does not penetrate through that door and so when the patient's behind the door they're safe. As part of knowing your fire response plan, it's important to learn which doors in your work area are smoke barrier doors. Smoke compartment doors are designed to segregate an area of the facility. That way, if fire starts at a particular wing in the hospital, the doors will close and trap the smoke in that wing, and it will not spread to the other areas of the facility. Evacuating patients from one smoke compartment to another is called horizontal evacuation. There's no question that the ability to be able to move patients horizontally within the system has a major impact on making uh, healthcare facilities much safer today than they were many years ago. There is no foolproof rule for determining whether or not to evacuate patients, but consider these basic guidelines. If the fire is small and can be quickly contained and extinguished, then evacuation of the smoke compartment may not be necessary. If a fire has not been extinguished but has been contained by closing a door, evacuation of the smoke compartment should be implemented. Fire extinguishers should only be used on small controllable fires. If the fire is not controllable, close the door and get away from it. In general, evacuate patients who are closest to the fire first. Move them horizontally into another smoke compartment. Staff members in the adjacent smoke compartment should be ready to assist evacuated patients. Always use the fastest, most convenient means to evacuate the patient. Wheelchairs, gurneys, or stretchers are one alternative. But usually, there aren't enough of them to evacuate everyone, and it will take valuable time to get more. Often, the fastest and best method is to use carrying or dragging techniques. This takes teamwork and practice. The number of patients that have to be evacuated and the number of staff available at the time may influence whether one person or two move each patient. If there are two staff members available, first remove the blankets or sheets covering the patient. Disconnect medical equipment that can't be moved with the patient. Untuck the corners and roll the sheet toward the patient. 